Well, good evening. Uh, here it's eight o'clock on the East Coast near New York City, and I know it's uh, it's different times elsewhere. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg, and I'm here with EdChat Interactive. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about professional development that sticks, and it seems to be a very hot topic, and uh, and it should be very interesting because I've talked to Fred a, a, a lot about this topic, and he's very very interesting, and an author. And now, without further ado, let me bring up Fred. So I saw that you were chatting with somebody. Hey, everybody. Probably How are you? I hope you're I probably having a, uh, a great evening. And uh... <laughs> so, so That's you're, great. No problem. You're, you're in Poughkeepsie, right? Or near Poughkeepsie? In New York, correct? So, not far from Poughkeepsie, about um, 45 minutes away. Yep, oh, about 45 okay. minutes away from Poughkeepsie. And you work at the... Uh, so, you know, you about... Um, yep. For BOCES. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, a number of people here are from New York State, but can you just describe what BOCES is? Yeah, for BOCES, right. So, so um, there seems to be a little bit of a lag here between me talking and you hearing. So I think probably the best thing is for me to come down and I'll bring your slides up. Great. So, okay. All right, everybody. How are you? Thanks for uh, joining this evening and uh, being here with me. I know it's tough to, um, to give up evening time. And so I appreciate uh, you all being here to talk. Uh, professional development and uh, designing PD in a way that it um, that it just seems to to make more sense for fo folks and is more meaningful. So we're going to be talking about a number of different things that um, we can do to really go from just talking about professional development uh, to professional development that really highlights learning. And uh, Mitch, if you don't mind going on to the next slide. So I want to start by um, sharing a little bit of um, my story. And it's funny, when I was putting this uh, slide deck together, you know, I put a picture of me and then thought, well, wait, that's kind of ridiculous because you're going to be able to see me anyway. So, um, you know, it's not because I, <laughs> I have this really crazy high opinion of myself, but that's a picture of me anyway. That's now, I guess, superimposed with myself on there. Um, but I started my career as a, um, as a middle school science teacher. And... Um, got bit by the leadership bug uh, as a department chair and started to think a lot about um, what really went into professional learning that people could really grab onto. And I was um, incredibly lucky to uh, later in my career move on to work with um, Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES. New York State has um, regional education service agencies. So they are RECES uh, in New York State. They're called BOCES, B-O-C-E-S. And we really provide um, services that uh, districts might not be able to provide on their own. And in that capacity, I work in our curriculum department. So after um, being a science teacher department chair, uh, I had the opportunity to join the uh, PNW BOCES team as a regional science coordinator. I worked with districts throughout the northern suburbs of New York City, as Mitch mentioned, not too far away from Poughkeepsie. Um, I'm about 45 minutes or so north of um, the northern part of New York City, about an hour away from Midtown Manhattan. Um, and along with doing science work, I, I found myself kind of really invested in um, looking at ways to design science-based professional learning that people could really um, really feel good about. And a few years ago, um, I moved into uh, an assistant director position. I work closely with my supervisor, Dr. Marla Gardner. She's, um, she's a great leader uh, for our department, has been a wonderful mentor for me. And in my role now, I'm basically working with districts throughout the northern suburbs of New York City around curriculum design, professional learning design, and the like. And so I've also had the opportunity to engage a lot with um, professional learning organizations. I've been very involved with the National Science Teachers Association, with ASCD. And that picture on the bottom left uh, was a great opportunity I had um, this past summer 
to work with um, the redesign challenge. It was basically um, hackathon meets, um, I, yeah, in a lot of ways, it was kind of like a hackathon for PD. And so we were kind of tasked with thinking about different ideas that would allow video-based PD to be drastically transformed. And all the while, over the last couple of years, I've been working on, um, on a book. And so the picture you see there is a, a book that I worked on with ASCD. It's called Professional Development That Sticks. And we're going to be um, looking this evening just at some of the main ideas from there. And, you know, um, the book goes into some more detail. If you get the chance to check it out, that would be great. I would love to hear feedback from you on what you think. And the picture on the right are my two daughters. I put that there because, you know, I think for, for those of you who are joining today and uh, work with adult learners, you know, um, when we have the opportunity to, to help adult learners follow their own learning pathway, um, it's probably the best conduit to helping our youngest learners um, really enjoy education and come away with a deep love for school. And so it's just kind of a target for me to always remember the importance of, um, of working with adult learners. So Mitch, if you don't mind uh, going ahead, that would be great. So I'm going to show you two pictures here. All right. So these are two pictures. They come out of um, articles about professional learning and education. And they, um, well, I won't see any. I won't say anything else. Instead, what I want you to do is just take a, a second to look at those two pictures. And in your um, in your chat box, if you could um, just type in why you think those pictures would be headlining pictures in articles about education and professional learning. So just take a minute to to share a few thoughts about why you think those pictures are there. So. In, um, in my room, as I'm looking at the, um, the chat box, I'm seeing things like, you know, learners are constantly being uh, talked at. You know, PD just always is the same thing. You know, it's a sit and get type of design. There's no interaction at all, you know. Um, and, you know, yeah, those are, those are all the types of things that, um, that we might come to associate with the common view of professional development. So Mitch, if you'd advance. So here are, here are just some of the things that, that kind of popped to my head. You know, as I was putting the slide deck together and I was looking for pictures, I was actually um, in some ways surprised, but not, not in others, how easy it was to find pictures like that when searching for images about professional learning. And in some cases, it's because a professional development structure hasn't changed in years. I mean, for the last, if you go back to, um, you know, the time of a nation at risk, right? And start to look at even a little before that as schools and classrooms ended up, um, trying to take on more and more challenges in learning, um, people focused on the delivery of content, right? So kids would sit in rows and content would be delivered. The professional development followed that. Uh, and yet, as we've made changes in how we look at instructional supports for students, we haven't necessarily made those changes for adults, right? Sometimes facilitation doesn't match what the audience actually needs. Many times, uh, professional development can be designed for the wrong audience entirely. Um, it can be kind of a one-size-fits-all. Sometimes it's the wrong time, you know, running, let's say, all professional learning sessions at the end of the day after everybody has kind of intellectually been spent. And sometimes it's that we haven't planned or our facilitation isn't so good or we have virtually no follow-up. So, Mitch, if you'd, uh, if you'd go on. So I wanna I wanna take a few minutes to have you um, get together with a few other participants and um, engage in a bit of a discussion. So what I'd like uh, like you to do, Mitch had kind of gone over the way to join up with other learners. I'd like you to connect with either one or two other people who are um, on our webinar this evening. Introduce yourself, and then I want you to think about three questions. Okay, so thinking back over the course of this last year. Okay, what was the best, uh, best professional 
development experience you've had. Okay, and what made it really stick for you? Why was it um, why was it so kind of uh, important to you and meaningful? Then I want you to think of the flip side. What's an example of a learning opportunity that just didn't hit the mark for you over the last year? And then for that third item, I want you to think about with your partner or your, the other two people you're chatting with, how might you help your school or district or organization take your second, you know, your, your non-sticky professional development and turn it into a learning opportunity that actually made a difference for you. So let's go ahead and join up and engage in a bit of conversation and we'll come back in a little bit. Good. So I see a few of you are doing that now. So uh, there's two, really two ways to interact this way. Uh, one is in your IM window, um, we can answer these questions. And then the second one uh, is find the avatar of somebody else and click on it. And then I see a couple of you are doing this already. Oh, good. A number of you are doing this already. And, and talk about these, these questions. And for those of you who don't have video, uh, go ahead and put in some of your comments into the IM window and share them with everybody else in, in your um, in your room. I'll bring myself down and I'll, and uh, Fred will come back up in a minute or two. Okay, it looks like there are some really spirited discussions going on and let me bring Fred back up. So Fred, it looks like uh, you, you, you were involved in a discussion yourself, correct? I was. In fact, um, you know, one of, one of the great things about, about our region is we're a very collaborative region in, um, in the suburbs of, of New York City. So I was actually um, chatting with a few folks who um, came to join and um, just chatting a little bit about some of the benefits of this type of platform and how it can really allow for discussions that you might not be able to have in your standard webinar type of format. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so, so you, when you do this, it's you because you've done similar sessions at schools or at districts. So, what are some of the things that people bring up in terms of how to, how to move from PD that really doesn't work to PD that works? Or is that your next slide? Well, those are those are actually the next set of slides. So, um, ah, okay. Before, oh, do you before want me to bring we get the slides up, <laughs> or do you want to talk to some of the people, um, well, some of the people who were in groups about the things that they brought up? Yeah, I'd love to actually hear from um, from anybody who's interested in sharing an example of um, a really great professional development session, and then one that wasn't as great. So we can kind of begin to think about um, how people categorize them. So it would be great to have somebody come up. So let's say somebody please click on that hand button underneath your avatar so I can quickly find you and you can have a discussion with Fred. And if no, oh great. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Hello. Hi there, Danielle. How are you? Doing well, Fred. How are you? Good. So, Danielle, thanks for, uh, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just jumping in. I apologize. <laughs> Jump right in. Jump right in. Tell okay. me what, what worked and what didn't. So, one of the people I have been involved in recently is work with core advocates. And that, for me, was something that really worked. It wasn't a sit and get, imagine that. There was lots of movement. There was lots of interaction. But it was also a PD that made me think. So as we're talking about shifts in mathematics and looking at instructional strategies, it wasn't just saying, here, you do this and you'll be a great teacher. It made me really reflect on what I did as a teacher and how it impacted my students. And so it was something I brought back to the district and I was super gung-ho about it because it was meaningful. Um, okay. Something that wasn't so sticky, um, publishers coming down to the schools and having a two hour sit and get after an early release Thursday about how to use a computer po component that I already know how to use. And we've done it three years in a row. And just like a teacher, like I had my eye, I was doing other things when I should have been listening, but it wasn't sticky. Been there, done that, kind of looked like those people in the pictures you showed, laid back, hanging around <laughs> there for two hours. 
<laughs> Great. Thanks, Danielle. Appreciate it. So I think, um, Mitch, if we could, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on the, um, on the time too. I want to be respectful of people's time and I'd love to be able to move into two other segments. So would we be able to get the slides back up? Perfect. So we had the opportunity to, um, to hear a bit from Danielle, and I think Danielle's examples give us a lot of food for thought, and hopefully in your conversations, you kind of centered on a couple ideas as well. And um, Mitch, if you'll go ahead. So um, as we move on and talk about really what, what we need for incredibly effective professional development. I think it's worth just spending a, a moment or two kind of reflecting on the research. And so what um what I what I did in, in working on my book was look at some of the, the great research out that's out there. And there there's quite a bit of it um, on effective professional learning design. And then kind of took a look at um how that plays out in the work that we do. And so what you'll see, um, what you'll see on that slide are what I like to think of as the Justice League of professional development design. Uh, besides being a, a tremendous, <laughs> a tremendous geek, um, I'm also a big fan of any any way that I can tie uh, cult, you know, pop culture or science fiction, whatever it might be, into work that I'm doing. So uh, you'll let, you know, there's a picture of the Justice League on that slide. There are seven members. Um, some who you may know, a couple who you may not, um, you know, but we can save that for another another webinar. Uh, but these these items that you see here, these seven big ideas um, are what research has shown is really necessary if professional development is going to make a difference for people. So we could spend a ton of time actually exploring this, but um, we're just going to dive into it for about a minute and look at these. Uh, so the best PD. Okay, is personalized, right? So it, it feels kind of right for that person, incredibly engaging. Uh, it's built to have positive accountability as a portion of it. Um, it's applicable to the audience's current role, right? Which means that um, professional development, in most cases, particularly if it's meant to be something that's going to change uh, practice, needs to be separated and structured for the people who you're really trying to reach. Um, it has to be timely. Right? People have to feel that it's valuable to them, that their time is being well used. And it has to be based on audience voice. You know, um, if a person is designing a professional learning session without really having an understanding of what the potential audience is hoping to get or is interested in focusing on or needs, uh, it's going to be challenging for that to be an impactful um, opportunity for people. And it's focused. There has to be a set purpose, okay? And it has to be, in the mo most cases, tied to some sort of vision uh, for the school district or organization. So Mitch, we can slide on. So uh, this gentleman right here uh, is Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, we can think of him in many, many ways as the father of this idea of stickiness. Uh, and in uh, The Tipping Point, which he wrote in 2000, um, he kind of posed this idea of a stickiness factor, which was um, the sense that a message was incredibly memorable, right? So um, information, that we hold and remember for long periods of time, we can say it, you know, it is, is sticky, but it's not just that we remember it. Um, it's that it's so memorable, it's so important to us, it makes such a difference in our way of thinking that it actually pushes people to take action or change their practice. And so, um, and Mitch, you can, you can slide on. You know, part of the thinking then is, well, we could say that for any given professional development session, if the ideas in that session are really sticky, okay, then it should lead to some sort of learning for people, right? So we can differentiate PD, right, professional development, from professional development that leads to learning, PDL, semantics maybe, 
but still it's an important designation, right? Because I would say that there are examples of professional development sessions that lead to learning and some that don't. And if we want to reach kind of that Justice League status, if we want to help ourselves design professional development that includes those seven research-based items, okay, we can help ourselves to do that by thinking about professional development as more than just the facilitation of it, which is one of the biggest mistakes we make, right? And after thinking about the research and thinking about my experiences, both as a teacher and then doing curriculum design work and professional development design work, I realized that we can really think of three different phases around professional development. So planning, providing, and then following up. And we can move on, Mitch. So I would, um, looking at these three phases is really the meat and potatoes of, um, of the book I've written. And there's a lot that can be said for it. Um, and we're going to really just do a, a glancing over to hopefully help um, provide you with ideas to think about in terms of how you might um, either change around the way you are providing professional development, um, think of different considerations, or maybe even give yourself a little pat on the back for kind of keeping some of these things in mind. That said, and you know, um, Mitch, I'm saying this to you as well, if there's interest, I'm happy to um, do more of this work tied specifically to some of these phases to help dive deeper into it. So um, in terms of the planning, this is actually the phase that um, tends to get the most uh, shortchanged in our professional development work. We tend to um, realize a few weeks before there is uh, some sort of superintendent's conference day or some sort of event that, um, you know, we have to do something professional development wise. And we, when we don't pay attention to planning, we miss out on really important details. So what are some of the things that have to go into our professional development planning? Well, we've got to focus on what we want the true purpose of the learning to be. Okay, we have to make sure that we're incorporating the voice of people who are going to be in the audience. And, you know, it's certainly okay for us to do this. We can incorporate the voice of students as well, right? And I say that somewhat sarcastically, right? Because we should, okay? Because in reality, one of the best gauges for us to see if anything has changed, if people have taken any action, is to see what difference it's making for not only our teachers, you know, but all of our staff and our students too. We want to make sure the form meets the function, right? So depending on what the purpose is, should determine how that professional development is going to be provided, okay? In some cases, you know, PLC type work is great. In other cases, the format can be blended or virtual. In still other cases, okay, and you know, I'm, you know, I, we, we could certainly engage in conversation about this. In certain cases, okay, a sit down lecture style session might be appropriate. But if we assume that that's the case in all sessions or situations, it's a problem, right? That's why we need to have an understanding of what the purpose is to know whether the form is going to work. We want to be logical in its design and we need to make sure we've collected data, right? We should be surveying whether it be conversations, um, actual surveys that are created for uh, staff. We should be using that data that we collect ahead of time to help us make decisions about the professional development we're gonna design. So let's uh, move on, Mitch. That providing phase is actually the one where we spend most of our time and in some cases, rightly so, it's very important for us to facilitate professional learning well, but it can't be the only part of our professional development work. So, you know, um, in some cases, I know some of you who are here are uh, consultants, you know, professional development providers, uh, professional development designers. In other cases, you might be um, the folks who are more of um, more of the people who are kind of audience members for the majority of professional development. Maybe you're you're a teacher and you're not necessarily involved in the planning of professional development, even though you should be. 
but um, you tend to be the recipient of most of it, right? And the key is, regardless of whether you yourself are providing professional development, okay, you're facilitating, or if um, you're bringing somebody in to do that, the facilitation has to be such that whoever's providing it is comfortable occupying a dual role, okay? They have to serve both as a facilitator and a participant, okay? Because one of the challenges to doing any type of work is making sure that you're able to shift course as you go. And those of you who are here who are teachers, okay, you see that on a daily basis, okay? Sometimes you have to step out of the role of teacher, right, to really get a sense of where your students are. And I would say that one of the best things we can do, right, is put that leadership in the hands of our students. Works the same way when we're talking about adult learning. We have to let our adult learners take on those roles too. So we need to know our people. We need to know our place, the logistics of the location where the professional development is happening, for instance. You wouldn't necessarily want people to get up and move around in a stadium seating auditorium, right? That might be a bit challenging. Um, so again, you have to know where you're going to be and what your purpose is going to be. And you want to make sure that even during the providing, you're collecting data on what people are learning. Um, you know, the, the piece about it is, is that data is not a bad word. Um, we sometimes think of it that way, but it's one of the most helpful ways for us to know where people are and where they want to go. And then we can make adjustments. You know, I, I like to talk about, um, you know, the best parts of an agenda are the two A's. Okay, what we start with and where we end. Okay, so it's important for us to start learning sessions on time. It's important for us to have a purpose. It's also important for us to respect people's time and end when we say we're going to. Um, but the G, E, N, and D, those middle parts, can be shifted. And to know how to shift, we need to know where people are. So, Mitch, we can move on. So, and then that last phase, the following up one, is also one that sometimes gets forgotten about. The challenge is that we only learn if we take action. And for most of us, I mean, I would say, at least for me, I'm more likely to take action if there's some sort of accountability to me doing so. And to help people with that, we want to be, um, we want to be in, a, in a position to look at data that's collected, whether it's, you know, workshop evaluations, conversations with people. And then we want to have honest conversations with the people who might provide the um, professional development or reflect ourselves. You know, uh, one of the best things that we can do if we're involved in planning professional development is spend time in the room during the facilitation. So we can help our facilitators get a better sense of what landed well and what didn't. You know, we also have to do follow-ups and check-ins with our audience. All of you will be hearing from me at some point after this webinar to get a sense of what feedback you had to share and what, what types of information you might need to help take your learning further. And then we have to remember that PD is a system. Right? When, we, when we collect data at the end, that's not a stopping point. In fact, it leads us into the planning for wherever we see our professional development work continuing. So we can move on, Mitch. So I'm going to give you a, a few additional minutes to uh, chat. What I'd like you to do, um, earlier today, I believe that um, Mitch and his team had sent out two files to you, and then I followed up a little bit later this afternoon. Um, if you registered very, very late, okay, um, we can still get you those files. One of them was um, a professional development for learning phase chart, okay, and uh, it's really a checklist that kind of breaks down each of the three phases into things that you might want to consider okay, as you go about your professional development design. So what I'd love for you to do, um, again, I'll you know, have you pair up with one or two um, people who are joining us for the webinar, and please, people who you haven't had the opportunity to interact with yet, I'd like you to use that um, professional development for learning um, checklist Think back to your uh, non-sticky PD example, right? Danielle was talking to us a few minutes ago about um, the design of the professional development that the publishers had structured. And in her case, she might look at that um, checklist, think back to that uh, non-sticky example of PD, 
And then with a partner, talk a little bit about some of the changes she would make if she was in charge of its design to make it a little more meaningful people. And then I might ask you to prioritize. You know, the thing is we can't make every change at any given time. SPD actually sits on a spectrum, right? It's a progression. And so if you had to make one change to that PD experience that didn't work for you, what would it be? And you can uh, converse, post that in the chat box. Uh, I'm also going to go and monitor Twitter. You can use the hashtag PD that sticks. And then we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, I saw that there were some really interesting interesting discussions going on you know Fred as you as you put those questions up you know what was something that you think could make the P that you've taken more relevant you know it, or uh, more sticky you know I was thinking that the number one thing for me would be to make it apply to what I'm doing and and what's interesting Absolutely. is it, so, so, so then the next thing I was thinking is, you know, there was I, there was a great example of that that in a in a course that I I took, where, um, you know, I've taken courses where where people in the past have gone up and says, you know, eighty percent of people don't listen very well, and it's like, I'm thinking about that. I'm saying, boy, could my wife really listen to this? Boy, she really needs this, you know, um, you know, and if she took it, I'm sure she would say the same about me. But there was one where the person said something, and then like a minute later, they they um, they had us write down what we thought they said about two minutes later, two minutes before, hmm. and then he had us compare the notes. And then he and then he brought back what he actually said, which was different from virtually what anything that anybody had written down, and then he said. So if I had if I had to and I said eighty percent of people need help on their listening skills, everybody would have thought, oh yeah, somebody else needs this. But you've just seen how poorly you list. So I was thinking, you know, one of the things is to build in into each PD that that you're doing or each example that you're doing something to make the people realize how they can apply that when they get back to their classes or, or, or whatever they're doing. That that'd be a, really an important thing for, for PD. So that that was my thoughts in reading through your questions. So, and I would say too, um, Mitch, that that follow-up piece, you know, I was, I was following uh, on Twitter and then I was um, mm -hmm. following through uh, the room's uh, chat, chat bar. And I, and I don't know if anybody, um, wants to come up just for a moment or two to talk about the follow-up piece. The That I think, you know, people were saying that that's an area that often gets kind of left by the wayside. And so we end up with this really great, it can even be a really great learning session, and then it just kind of stops. You know, so I don't know, I know we've got a little more than 10 minutes left, so I want to be, I just want to be aware of people's time, but I don't know if um, maybe we could get somebody to come up real quick just to talk about the follow-up. Right. It would be great. Again, uh, click on that raise hand button so that I can find you. And then I can bring you up. Oh, come on. You guys are teachers. You can up in front of people. Ah, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hey, LaToya. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, Good. I guess I was focusing on the question wrong because in my head, the follow up to me is always after the PD and how do I follow mm -hmm. up after the PD? Because I know during the PD, following up and getting that data can be in the form of technology, um, Google Docs. I know um, Kathy talked about um, today's meet and we talked about our conversation. So, I mean, technology is a great way to implement to be implemented in the PD to receive that feedback and use that feedback to adjust the PD. But I guess I was still in the mindset of, okay, now after the PD, how do I ensure implementation? Because I work with K-12 science teacher. Yep. And how do I know that it was meaningful? Because you can say what you want in the PD, but if it's truly meaningful, then I would actually see evidence of that in your classroom. Right, and I, I would say that, um, you know, so thinking to some of the work 
that we've been doing in, in our organization, one of the key things we try to do is avoid um, one day kind of sessions. We, we always try to build in additional opportunities for people to get back together and learn from each other. So it might be a follow up session of sharing where people kind of share what they've learned, let's say over the say two over months the two in between, and then where the facilitator will kind of share some great follow up steps. And that way, you know, you've got this this real kind of great opportunity for people to build on what they've learned in the initial session. And then there's positive accountability for people to come back together and share what they've learned because everybody wants to be able to share learnings with the group. Right. Mm -hmm. So great. Thanks, Latoya. Thank you. So, Mitch, we're we're going to go on to that last segment if we can. Great, and we can move to that next slide, Mitch. So this last segment is really just um, something I'll share for a couple minutes, and then I'll have you get back uh, together to chat for a few more before we before we wrap up for for the um, the evening. And one of the things I realized um, as I was putting together my book um, is that, you know, yes, we've identified that change needs to be made. And yes, this idea of, you know, looking at the research and coming up with kind of a structure with these, these three phases can be really helpful to help us think of professional development, think of strategies that we might um, build into the work that we do. But at least for me, you know, and Mitch, Mitch brought up a great point. So my... I, I don't always listen as well as I should, right? So I was thinking like, hmm, what would my wife Lori say? And she would say, I don't listen, right? And so that's an area for me to work on. And one of the best ways for me to do that is to continually remind myself that I need to be a better listener. Well, it works the same way here, right? Um, in order for me to start thinking about those different phases, I needed to come up with some sort of way for me to remember to... Um, to focus on those phases. And, you know, it could be a mnemonic, could be a graphic organizer. And for me, I like organization. I like visuals to help me do that. So Mitch, if you'll go on to uh, that next slide. And so what I did is I came up with uh, the TAR method for making PD sticky, right? TAR, you know, it's sticky. So, you know, I also have a bad sense of humor, you know, or a punny sense of humor, if you will. Um, and so the TAR method, we can break down into um, steps that require us to think, steps that require us to act, and then steps that require us to review, right? Those are kind of those TAR um, actions. So Mitch, if you'll go on. So what I uh, what we shared with you earlier today was this TAR organizational framework. Now, you know, you could use this for putting together professional development sessions, but you could also really use it for um, about any type of activity that you go through throughout your day. And basically, the, the whole idea behind it is you take something like the planning phase and you break it up into those three different categories. What do I need to think about? What do I need to act on? And then what am I going to need to review? Right. And then you can provide yourself with some steps you'll take. So, you know, um, without to get too involved, because I want to make sure we have at least a few minutes to chat. Um, if I'm thinking about planning for professional development, some of the things I need to think about is what's the purpose going to be? You know. Who are some of the people who this is going to apply, uh, apply to? What might I need? What action steps might I need to take for acting? Well, I've got to invite people to help me actually engage in conversation about uh, this professional development. I'm going to want to have a survey out there so I can have data to help me plan. And what am I going to review? Well, I might review the design of my survey to see whether it was effective. I might review the survey data that comes back. So it's a good way, at least for me, to help me chunk out the different parts of those phases so I don't get kind of paralyzed by what seems like a really, really big um, series of steps. Okay, so Mitch, still go on. So just in about three minutes or so, before we come back together for a minute or two wrap up, I'd love for you to take a look at that uh, TAR planning sheet, and Mitch, maybe in a second, you'll put it um, you'll put it up on uh, on the screen. And I want you just to think, um, you know, join up with one other person. I want you just to think about the applicability of a tool like this, 
and how you might use this or something like it to help you break down kind of the really big nature of professional development design or even, you know, um, you know, curriculum writing. I mean, you could use it for something else too. But think a little bit about the benefit of actually kind of chunking out that work into smaller segments to help you make sure that you're keeping yourself focused on what you need to do. So um, Mitch, if we could just give everybody a couple minutes just to chat, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back for kind of a, a final few minutes. Okay, and I'm going to do some magic. I'm going to load that uh, tar up, hopefully, so that you can see it. It's going to. This is going to take me a minute or two to uh, to get it. So uh, so start your conversations. And those of you who do not have video cameras, again, uh, put your comments into the IM box or uh, go out to Twitter and uh, tweet with the hashtag PD that sticks. Okay, so let's bring Fred back up for the end. Okay, welcome back up. Were you able to Thanks, talk Mitch. to anybody during that short break or not? So I actually, um, I was monitoring the uh, Twitter hashtag and just replying to a few tweets and ah. doing some retweeting. So, mm -hmm. And then I posted to the, uh, the IM uh, box as well. Oh, good. Okay, let me bring myself down and I'll bring you out up your last slides. Great. So um, I, I really want to thank everybody for, for being here this evening. This is, it's a, it's a big topic, it's a meaty topic, and, and it's certainly a, an important one. And um, you know, my, my hope in the course of the last hour was to do three things. One, it was to, to kind of reiterate the importance of our work in this area and the need to make sure that um, as we think about the professional development design we do, that we're remembering kind of the importance of um, it being most meaningful for people. Uh, then I wanted to just kind of share a little bit about um, how the research on professional development has helped me to think about the three phases um, of what I call professional development for learning. So the idea that we have to plan, we have to provide, and then we have to follow up. And we can't just find ourselves in that providing phase, right? We have to kind of bookend um, that providing with what comes before and what comes after. And remember, it's a system. And then my 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 last portion was to give you a bit of a sense of, um, for me, a organizational framework, that idea of TAR, to think, act, and review, that helps me kind of figure out my action steps for each of those different phases so I don't get lost in the bigger picture. So, um, you know, I wanted to just share my contact information as, as we wrap up. I've got 901 right here, so we're, we're a minute over, so I hope that... Uh, that you'll, you'll give me another 30 seconds just to chat. Um, I provided you with my contact info. So um, phone, uh, two email addresses. The T is for uh, my Twitter handle. The V is actually for Voxer. Uh, I found Voxer to be a great tool um, for professional learning. Uh, and I have a tremendous group of critical friends that, um, that I, I kind of interact with daily and that help me check my thinking. Uh, where it says this, uh, that's a new tool I'm exploring. Um, it's a social media tool that allows you to share one article or item a day. Um, and what's really cool about it is it, because of that, it forces people to kind of share um, something that's had the biggest impact on them on that day. And it's actually exposed me to a lot of great writing outlets that I didn't know about. And then um, I'll, I'll share out this presentation uh, with everybody via email later, but I've also provided a couple links um, to uh, to my book in the event where you want to check it out. I welcome any and all feedback. There's a link uh, to getting it through ASCD uh, and one from uh, Amazon, and depending on whether you're an ASCD member or not, or a Prime member or not, might, um, might impact uh, the potential cost there. 
you know, in addition, I'm happy to to discuss this deeper with anyone who's interested and talk more about professional uh, development design. It's something that um that I really love, and I'm lucky in that I get to work in a wonderful organization that allows me to do this work on a daily basis. And uh, I would hope at some point to have the opportunity to um, to continue to chat with all of you and uh, kind of continue to grow our work around uh, professional development for learning. So thanks. And, and Fred, I was wondering if uh, some of the people here are not from your BOCES region, um, could they contact BOCES or contact you and could, could they get you to come out to their school to work with them or their district? Sure. So what um, if they'd like our, if they're in our BOCES region, yeah, I did, I did, yeah. If they're um, if they're in our BOCES region and want us to help with some of our BOCES services, uh, we can certainly do that as a BOCES. If they'd like me to specifically help based on the book, then I'd have them contact me, and we could have those conversations separately. So you know, we would we would do it that way. Okay. Great. That's great. Yeah. And then um, for the, also for those of you who are here, if you'd like to see Fred again on EdChat Interactive, uh, let us let us know. And uh, we can, you know, some of these topics were huge. Okay. Some of these topics were huge topics. And you we could devote a, ses a session just on planning or a session right. just on, you know, different ways to follow up on the PD. So, um, so there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, but but thank you. I um, you know I, I always learn so much from these and and this was certainly no exception. You were you were great. I I really enjoy it. It was, it was nice to meet you. It was nice to talk to you and nice to listen to you. So thanks everybody. Um, so good night. Uh, go back to your family. <laughs> um, say good night to the kids. And um, I'm going to go back to uh, my family as well. Uh, so this is Mitch Weisberg for EdChat Interact. Active and I'm saying good night. Uh, we have another session tomorrow, so hopefully a few of you will be here tomorrow as well, and um, and we'll have a few, we'll add a few more sessions d during the summer. So good night and uh, enjoy your evening.